Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about toxic business traits. Maybe you have some, maybe you don't want to have them, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Over five years of content. Five years. That's kind of nuts, actually. Anyway, go back, listen, watch. It's on YouTube and anywhere podcasts are found, of course. But shameless plug of the day. If you want to be a cool kid, which I know you do, A lot of you already are cool kids, but it means you're putting your orders in through me. Then, yeah, I'm a rep with windowcleaner.com. That is my job. That is my gig. That is how I make money. It costs you nothing extra to let me put your orders in, but I get credit. So if you want to do that, please let me put your orders in, big or small, all of them. Just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, put it in. And I'm telling you, I would love to do that. By the way, a lot of you, be patient. If you text me at like 9 at night, it's not going to ship it till the next day. So don't at 9.01 put the order in and go, I couldn't wait anymore. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. But my number is 862-312-2026. Text me. Yo, Jersey, everything's in. Let me put that order in. That is how I make my cheddar and how I live my lavish, lavish lifestyle with my free my free shirts by the way this a buddy owns a mechanic shop and i'm wearing a free shirt that's how lavish it is but if you are in window cleaning and you love the industry you love the culture you love everything about it american window cleaner magazine is amazing actually uh this also is a shameless plug but there are a ton of you who do not have a subscription still and i would love to change that so go to awcmag.com get a subscription there's actually a bunch of freebies right now. You get a subscription, you get a bunch of sticker packs. Uh, the magazine is paper. It's in your hand. It's real. I love I love having a real magazine just in general. Uh, if you like posters of window cleaning, you're in the culture. You're one of the cool kids. If you like stickers about window cleaning, you're in the culture. You're one of the cool people. If you love articles and bettering your business, I mean, heck, you're listening to a podcast all about window cleaning and how to better your business. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription to the magazine. It'd be absolutely amazing. Buy some stickers, just get some swag. Anyway, all right. Shameless plugs done. Today, we are talking about toxic business traits. Now, if you didn't know this about me, I talk to, on average, probably um, 50 people to 100 people a day. On like a Monday, it's at least 100 people because I'll have 30, 40 text messages when I get in on Monday morning. Like just yesterday, I texted over 30 people just yesterday. Right, So I talk to a lot of people. A lot of people are new in business, uh, but most people aren't. And I come across a lot, a lot of stuff. Just a lot of people telling me things, uh, which is absolutely amazing. I get to live vicariously through you guys. But there's a lot of things that people talk about that it makes me cringe. It makes me sad that people are focused on that. These are toxic to a business, toxic to the growth, toxic to the health of a company. But it's surprising how many of these kind of traits people have. It's it's really surprising how many things kind of get embedded in you that you don't even realize is just absolutely awful. This is like a two, you guys know I love my cliche, cliche metaphors. But if you've ever had a batch of strawberries from the grocery store and one of them gets mold, a little bit of fuzz on it, all of them will have that. If you have one bad trait, all of your traits will turn. If you have one bad idea, all of your ideas turn negative. You choose positivity over negativity. And I'm telling you, you will be absolutely, absolutely uh, a world different than where you are now. But here's a few traits. Maybe you have some of them. 
Uh, maybe you don't. But the first one I want to talk about is comparing your company to others. I'm This one, listen, look at your windshield. You have a mirror. It's this big. On your windshield, which is huge. So you don't want to lose sight of what's behind you, but you don't want to focus on it. You don't want a little... Uh, You just want a little bit of your focus to go back there. I'm telling you with companies, this is the same thing. If a company's above you, further than you, bigger than you, people are focused like, ah, you know, if they're in a different market, they go, oh, well, their customers are different. No. Oh, well, it's this. No. They're out hustling you. That's why they're better than you. That's why they're bigger than you, right? Right? They are out hustling you. It's time to up your ante. But to focus on that and only want to chase that and only need to be better than the guys behind you, right? Look at your area. You know there's more guys behind you than there are in front of you. To focus on them doesn't allow you to focus on you. If you know your path, if you know your USP, your unique selling point, the unique thing that makes you why I would buy you, right? 10 of you, 10 window cleaners standing in a row, not one person can talk about price, why do I hire you? If you are unique, that's you. You have your identity. Why would you look at somebody else because they're not you, right? I find so many people getting into the trap that, um, hey, let me ask you this question. Uh, I got these guys who uh, they're 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 doing this and this and this, and I, I just don't understand how they can do this or they can do. It's that. Why focus on them? Focus on what they're doing. Focus on what you can do to be better. There's a lot of people out there who basically t- tell you what they want to tell you. I could tell you I have a million dollar business right now. And you'd be like, wow, all right. And then maybe you're at like, that guy's full of crap. Maybe you're like, well, I could be that big. That's awesome, right? There's a lot of crap out there. There's a lot of egos and there's a lot of measuring contests. You don't have to fall into that. Don't compare your company to other companies because you're all in different places. Not one company has ever matched another company to the T. We started the exact same day, did the exact same thing, exact same employees, exact same route, exact same USP, exact same area. None of that. So why compare yourself? Now, if you just want to see what's out there, right? If you just want to like, ah, man, these guys are doing uh, really good. Looks like they got three trucks running, man. I'd love to have three trucks. And that's where it is. That's your rear view mirror. You can see people. You can focus on little things, but you're looking at the big picture. You're focusing on you, your growth, where you're going and how you're doing it. Not their growth, their company, their culture and how they're doing it. Because all you do if you copy what they're doing is not become the size that they are. All you do is water down what they're doing, which in turn waters down what you're doing. If you got a guy in your area has a USP of XYZ and you make your USP XYZ, guess what? It's not unique. Now, when both of you are standing there, you've just watered down both of you and they're going to pick somebody else. You've just shot yourself in the foot. So why compare yourself to somebody? You're in different markets. You're in different areas. Your company may not be as big as another company, but maybe it's stronger. You're listening to a podcast. Maybe you subscribe to AWC Magazine, American Window Cleaner Magazine. Maybe you're doing things they're not doing which means you're smarter, stronger, more responsible. I'm telling you, I'd rather a thousand percent be a stronger company than a big company. And you can't see strong. You know if your company's strong, but you don't know if the next company is strong. That's for them to know. All you can do is see their outside, their outward appearance, their gross, X amount of trucks, X amount of employees. You look at a company I'll say, uh, if you know, uh, Pro Wash, uh, no, uh, Wise Guys, Power Wash, Atlanta, amazing company, amazing company, I love the dude, uh, Wesley's amazing, uh, Matt, the operations officer is amazing, just great company, awesome company, trucks are amazing, they just posted their 2022, uh, picture, they have like 
30 guys. All the trucks look like on point. Everything is clean. Their outfits are amazing. Their uniform is on such point that I would put them up against anybody and be like, that company is different. They're amazing. Everything they do is amazing. The guy is a genius and he's young. But that particular company, I know for a fact, are super, super strong. But by looking at a picture of a bunch of guys and a bunch of trucks and a bunch of whatever, you can say, hey, this is amazing. I bet they're doing great, but you don't know. You also don't know which path they took to get there, right? He's got full-time sales guys. Do you have full-time sales guys? Well, then how are you going to match his company? How are you going to match that? And why do you want to match that size? You can see it as, hey, this is a goal of mine, but it doesn't have to be a comparison. Focus on yourself. Don't lose sight on you. The next one, which is actually tied into the first one, is losing focus on the experience. So many people are more worried about, oh, I got to I gotta uh, take this company. I got to uh, uh, clean a better window. Oh, I got to do this. I, I got I to gotta make sure that this is blah, blah. They lose ex- the experience. I have uh, uh, friends who have stated that in their growth, their growth plan is to not lose sight of the experience. To not lose the connection of the experience. I think that's absolutely amazing. So many people are worried about getting big, are being those guys, having more trucks and ton of people. And then what happens is that they have 20 new people. All of them suck. They're not getting trained well because they're just so busy. They can't train. And now you have a whole new experience than you did a year ago or two years ago. The experience is why somebody hires you. The experience is, let me rephrase that. The experience is why somebody rehires you for the second time, the third time, fourth time. The experience is why people continue to buy from you. If your return numbers, if you actually look at numbers, I love numbers, numbers don't lie. One plus plus one plus one is two, always. You can't sugarcoat that. It's always that. Numbers speak volumes. If you actually look, which I bet 1% of you do, but what your actual actual return, not like, oh, I bet you 90%. No, you 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 don't know if you haven't actually looked and done the research. It's a big project. It's not a click of a button, right? But if you're at 90% return, those numbers are pretty good. If you're at mm, 70% of my people come back every year, 50% of my people come back every year. People are busy. They're just... It's the experience. Well, it's also your follow-up, right? Dentist clothes, all that stuff. But the experience what makes people want to come back. If somebody has such an amazing time hiring your company, oh, these guys were great. They did such a good job. They did blah, blah, blah. All these things. I want that again. I want that good feeling. It's why people do drugs. They get it once. And they want to have it again. They want to have it again. I want that experience. I want that. I want to feel that. I want to be happy. The unfortunate side with drugs is they're always chasing it. The experience goes down. So they have to keep doing more. And that's where people get into trouble. But in happiness, if something makes you happy, you love fishing. What are you trying to do? You're trying to go fishing. You love it. It makes you happy. That is the experience of fishing. The experience of of fishing. Nobody goes, oh, I love fishing because I need to catch 20 fish every time I go. There's times where you're sitting out there on a boat or whatever hobby you do, and it wasn't all that great, but it still was fun. The experience is the connection. If you lose focus on the experience, you lose focus on the company. You lose focus on why people hire you. It's not because you clean the best window. I will go out a thousand times and tell you that. One of the most common things people tell me and why people hire them is, oh, I do such great work. I do such good work, they come back. Wrong. Wrong. No one cares that you do 98% and the next guy does 97. No one cares. That is not at all. Not one person you have ever done work for came back because of only that. 
They just have it. Unless the last guy did such garbage work that it's super noticeable, no one cares. No one needs the, the windows done at 99% versus 98%. No one needs that. What they need is an easy experience that made them happy. That they could book and get done and now they have sun and it just feels good. They need all of that more than they need a perfectly clean window. Don't lose sight of the experience. Another thing that people close themselves off with is learning from others. This, to me, happens daily. I'm not a somebody. I'm just a guy with a microphone. I'm just a guy who sits here. I sell supplies. I've been in the business for a while. I, I tend to feel like I know some things, but I'm not 100% right on everything. These are opinions. A lot of them are opinions. So when I talk or babble or whatever, and you're listening right now in your car or you're on the job or you're whatever, maybe you learn stuff. I hope a lot of you do. I hope a lot of you don't even learn stuff because I'm not teaching, but just change your mindset or think of something different and you change based on something you hear, which means you are now better than you were yesterday. 1% better. Every day be 1% better. It's not a big step, right? But there are so many people out there who have completely closed themselves off to the fact that they do not know everything. To just close it off. Dinosaurs die. If you right now know everything you'll ever know ever, close shop. Close your doors. Go live in an island. Because I've never, ever, ever met somebody who did not learn something up until the day that they died. There are so many people who will tell me something, and it's incorrect. I'm like, right, well, yeah. Uh, actually, you know, this and this and this, and this is why, and this is why. And they're like, yeah, no. I've been doing this for 10 years. I think I know. I've been doing this for 30 years. I think I know. No, you obviously don't. If you instantly stop and go, I know this. I know more than you, right? The Ron Swanson. If you instantly think that and you'll never get anything out of it, you're doing yourself such a disservice. There's so many things now that weren't here 5, 10, 15 years ago. There's so many things now that the new guys know that you old guys may not know. Yeah, with age comes wisdom. I know there's a lot you know, but things change. There's always new concepts. There's always new ideas. I did not do the dentist clothes for most of my company. I only thought of it, came up with whatever. I only honed in on that towards the end. 15 years of my company, I didn't do that. So stupid. If I would have, my company would have been a hundred times the size. It would have just been astronomical difference. One stupid little concept. But then the other guys are going, ah, well, <laughs> yeah, I think I know a thing or two. I've done this for 30 years. Okay. You don't have any gaps. You don't have any way to be stronger than come. Well, you could always be strong. Well, then you didn't do everything perfectly. To this point, there's always something. Don't block yourself off from learning. Don't think I know everything because you don't. I don't. No one does. I am willing to bet that I am more involved in window cleaning than anyone that's watching. And that's a pompous thing. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I do window cleaning. I am talking about window cleaning for 13 hours a day, every single day. Every single day I've talked to thousands. I talk to thousands of window cleaning companies every year. Thousands of window cleaning companies every year. I have private coaching sessions where I really get to get into other companies. I've owned two of them myself. I've successfully sold companies. I have done videos and content and talked about window cleaning for five years just in this one podcast, not to mention the lives, not to mention the free content we put out there, not to mention the magazine that I put out there, not to mention all of that stuff. I'm into it and I know a lot and I've had interviews with companies like Justin Monk SEO. I've talked to guys like that in the SEO side where a lot of people haven't, right? But yet every single day I learn something new. 
I learn an awesome concept from one of you every single day. So you can never stop learning. You can never block yourself off. No matter how embedded you are, no matter how long you've been in business, no matter what you do, you're always going to learn something else. If you stop that learning process, if you stop your brain and going, hey, I'm not open to everything, it doesn't mean that everything else is right, right? If you come to me and I say, um, you know, uh, I like to uh, give everybody a chocolate chip cookie with every one of my services, they get a chocolate chip cookie and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool concept, you know, but yeah, it's not really for me. Awesome, 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 awesome. You do not have to do everything that everybody says. Please don't do everything that everybody says. Not all answers or ideas are right. Not all ideas or answers are good and not everything I babble about sure is good. But keeping yourself open to the idea to just think about it is huge. Let's talk politics for two seconds. Not even into politics. You don't have to fast forward. Don't worry. But if you're either left or right, right? If you're a business owner, which you are if you're listening, you're more than likely going to be right because in your ideas, everything kind of follows that side. But if somebody on the far other side, no matter which way you go, tells you some things calmly and just like explains some stuff, there is a really good chance you'd be like, oh, wow, hmm, I guess I didn't think of that. Yeah, you know, I still kind of, I still think this is good. I still think this is right. You could talk about the worst or hardest subject for people to talk about. You could talk about religion. You could talk about abortion, which is big right now. And if you just hear what somebody else is saying, does not mean you have to agree with it. But if you hear it, it means, hey, well, maybe I could change my mind. Is there anything, you know, tell me what your stance is and why your stance is. I'd love to know. That's learning. Just being open to it doesn't mean you have to change, but it means you have to be open to it. Do not block yourself off because dinosaurs die. Another big one is not advancing. In that same thing with knowledge, and by the way, let me let me go back. That babbling about me knowing more than any, that that's not, don't take that as pompous. I, I really, you know I'm not like that. I'm just saying that uh, I, I always can learn stuff myself. Every day I learn something. Yeah, we'll go back to that. Anyway, not advancing yourself in a company. I know guys, too, that have been in business for a really long time and they don't have water fed. Cool, like if you don't want water fed, awesome. I cannot for the life of me ever, ever understand why somebody does not want water fed. You haven't used it. It may be too expensive. It may be a little bit confusing. You may not fully understand it. But doesn't mean that is not the greatest tool ever. Right? Not advancing your company is a huge issue. I talked about Monk SEO just a second ago. Uh, you guys know I've talked about Monk forever. I've known the guy for literally 15 years. He's just an awesome, awesome dude. Him and Bobby, just if you've dealt with anybody over there, they're phenomenal. They do SEO. They do website building, all that stuff. I have had my website rebuilt before. I had the SEO work done. The SEO work is the absolute um, most amazing thing you can do for your company. It keeps you number one. It keeps you so relevant, you just blow everybody by. SEO work is the number one thing that you could possibly do for your company to get yourself seen, to get new customers, to get all that. I will stand by that and I will die. Maybe it's because I use Monk, right? The, the results are amazing. Like maybe if you're using somebody different, maybe that's not the case. But anyway, all I can speak of is the Monk SEO for that side. But that particular thing, I've had people where they're asking me, you talk about Monk uh, SEO all the time, like I've been in business for, for, for X amount of time and, and I'm just doing good, you know, I just don't need that. Okay, that's cool. But understand that if you want to be bigger than you are now, if you want to bring in customers, you have to do that, right? Yeah, no, you know, I've never paid for SEO before, so why would I start now? There's not a chance in all of heck. <laughs> I try not to swear on this show. But there's not a chance in all of heck that you do not do SEO and you are the number one company in all those aspects. Because there's always guys that are ranking better than you. That's literally how SEO works. The SEO, if you don't know, by the way, is, is how you get your website found. 
you get people to buy your product, to find you. It's like having a billboard. It could be the greatest billboard ever, but if you put it in an alley, no one sees it. SEO is the greatest money you could possibly... The, the ROI on SEO, there's a lot of abbreviations, is amazing. But I always still get people who say, you know, I, I've done it for so long, I don't need that. If you don't and you're capped, you're like, hey, I don't want any more work, I understand that completely. But if you say, I get all the work I need and, and yeah, we're, we're growing and, and you're not doing SEO, you're not advancing like you're supposed to. You've, you've put up the wall and you're not advancing. Same thing with Waterfed. If you're not getting into a new tool that is absolutely amazing, we sell thousands of systems a year, thousands of polls and systems and all this stuff. Everyone can be better from waterfed i will thousand percent guarantee that no you can't use it in a living room i know it's a tool i never ever would tell you it's great for absolutely every circumstance it is just amazing for every exterior circumstance but if you're not getting into that and you're not advancing your company it's the same thing with not learning from others it's the same thing when you put that wall up you're stopping your progression you always have to be advancing. You have to be a percent better every day. Your company has to be a percent better every day. Don't stop your advancements, right? And the last one for me is just not focusing on the empire, not focusing on the big picture. A lot of people go, hey, I got this one job right now. Wow, I just got this thing. Oh, I just got, oh man, I just landed a job that's $1,000 a year. It's $1,000 a job. Cool. That's a $10,000 a year or $10,000 in 10 year job, right? That's adding X amount to your empire. Don't lose focus on your company and focus on the now. You have to see it. But think of the biggest picture. People go, I don't really like route because, you know, uh, I don't make much money on route. You don't until you have a heavy route. Route is frequency. You could have one person in route, just one person, one truck, doing route 40 hours a week, and you're guaranteed that much money. Guaranteed. As guaranteed as you possibly can be, at least. And I'm, I'm calculating this now. But if you have 40 hours, and we'll say you normally make 75 bucks an hour, but guess what? On route, you only make $65 an hour. That means your company is getting $2,600 a week for potentially ever. Potentially ever. That's, I mean, I mean the, for you to not do that, to me, makes no sense. It makes no sense, but it's your plan. But if you're not focused, if you're focused on the now, hey, you know, I'm only making $10 on this job. You are. Until you reach everything. If you're building the empire, all aspects have to be strong. All aspects have to be strong. Right? If you have a 40-hour-a-week route guy, you're potentially doing $135,000 a year. In that one guy. And that is rain or shine or snow. Right? Yeah, you're going to lose customers. Yeah, you need to get customers. But if you can do one route guy 40 hours a week, you're almost guaranteed 135000 Focus on the empire. What does it add to this? Big projects. People get a little bit more leery of it. It's a giant chunk. Where does that take your company? If you land a $100,000 job, which... I have a few people right now that have giant six-figure jobs. A lot of that's like the, the coaching stuff. But a lot of these people that have, I have probably a half dozen guys right now that are working on a six-figure job that they just booked uh, up to uh, one of them in a multi-year contract is a seven-figure deal. These one job, they're focused on the now, which is the hard, like how do we get it done? But focusing on a job that you have that much income coming in from one job, that changes the trajectory of your business. 
if it gets done, it gets done right, and there's repeat, to influx your company by $100,000 with one phone call, that changes everything from your marketing. You're running 10% marketing budget, say. Now all of a sudden you just made another $100,000. That means your marketing budget just went up by $10,000. You just increased your budget by $10,000 in one job. This changes your marketing. In your marketing, your ROI, say out of that $10,000, you end up bringing $30,000 back in, in work. That $30,000 back in was just from your increase in the one job. So not only did you make $100,000, you made another $30,000 because of having that. Focus on the empire. Focus on the long term. Focus on it all, but don't lose sight of the big picture. What does this look like to the success of your entire company? Anyway, that's the show. I hope you uh, dug it. Uh, it's a very dry ending because I got a little worked up and I apologize. <laughs> Hopefully you got some fire. Hopefully you, um, you know, it helps you uh, blow things up. It helps you just get motivated. Get, this time of year is so hard. When I'm recording this, it's like the beginning of July almost. It is really, really hard to stay motivated, especially now. We just came off of spring. Things are hard, maybe slowing down. We're tired. Stay motivated and stay hungry, right? Anyway, my shameless plugs is, of course, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you want any type of supplies, I would love, love to put your order in. Please shoot me a text. Say, yo, everything's in my cart. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Uh, give me a call. Shoot me a text anytime. Get the magazine, awcmag.com. Get the magazine. It is absolutely amazing, and I really appreciate it. It really genuinely helps me out. There's a bunch of swag too. Buy stickers, deck your stuff up. There's actually a big bundle right now. It's like 20 sticker sheets. It's crazy. You want stickers for your buckets and your guy's stuff? Get it. I don't even remember all the other stuff that I talked about, but you heard the episode. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Uh, but other than that, until next week, don't be toxic, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.